Hello, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, my dear family members of Olo, and all people of goodwill. You know the time. It's Monday, that beginning of the week, the address from your priest here at Our Lady of the Woods, Father Bob Johnson. Today is a very beautiful feast day. It's, for me, one of the important moments of our own Catholic faith. It really, for me, summarizes what evangelization is about and the good news. It's the feast of the conversion of St. Paul. St. Paul coming from Saul to Paul. It's interesting that in this feast day today, uh, Scott Hahn writes in Lessons from the Con Conversion of St. Paul the following. He says, It's been also said that Paul was such a great apostle because Saul was such a great persecutor. God simply took all of that energy that was misspending on the persecution of Jesus' followers and redirected that, harnessing it in a holy way by making him the most fervent and effective apostle back in the first century. I think it's a good question for you and I to meditate on during the week. What kind of you know zest and zeal do we have these days? What is kind of the, the power and energy we bring to the Lord at this time? Is there any energy that we're really misspending? Is there any energy that we're really re- directing in the wrong ways. And so during this conversion of St. Paul on this feast day, perhaps the question should be for you and I, where do I place a lot of my own energy in my life? Is it being harnessed in a constructive way? As Reverend John Henry Hansen uh, reminds us, being converted is simply meeting yourself for the purpose of going to the very end of your being. Conversion means a willingness to see the truth of things and to conform our conduct to it, end of quote. So I pray this week that we'll have the energy of that conversion of St. Paul. We'll have the same zeal and zest, and we'll harness all of the energy that we have this week into bringing the good news. And it's interesting with St. Paul, you know, he really thought he had the right agenda. He went around persecuting the Christian community because he thought they were wrong. He thought they did not know, and he wanted to bring them back to the Jewish fold and bring them back into the right setting. I can't help but think nowadays, even in our own nation, there's a lot of harnessed energy out there bringing, I think, people in the wrong direction. So may we have the conversion. May we have the zeal. May we have the call of St. Paul. And so this week I have a few announcements. Um, tomorrow evening, our pastoral council will meet at 7 p.m. on uh, Zoom. We still meet the parish finance and the pastoral council still meet every, every month. Again, if you have any concerns, anything you want to bring to the council, certainly you can contact me, but you, know, you should know your council members. Um, El Coto is the president. Uh, and there's a number of them. Look in, in the bulletin, look on the parish website, and if you have concerns, you have things you think need to be brought up, talk to them about it. Certainly, we're also looking that every committee send in a report, so we have a little sense of what's going on in the parish. So if you are a committee leader or a committee chairperson, please don't forget to at least give some kind of summary, send it in to Heather Clint or to El Coto, so that we have a sense of what's going on from the various groups and committees. This week, um, the priest of our family of parishes will be meeting um, on Zoom, also kind of to discuss with ourselves. I brought it up last week, uh, but we're actually going to meet this week um, in regards to what we can expect of each other as priest to each other. So hopefully that will be our meeting this week. Um, as you probably know, or maybe you don't, Children and Youth Faith Formation began again this evening. It's this evening and tomorrow. Uh, they were on uh, last week when they had kind of conferences with the catechist. And so they begin again faith formation this week. So let us pray for them. Let us pray for our students, our catechists, the parents, families, our director and faith formation secretary, and everyone who somehow helps our children and young people um, come to know God in a beautiful and new and exciting way. 
I point out to you that Archbishop Vigneron, as this last weekend you would have heard, was the Word of God Sunday that Pope Francis had instituted in 2019. Um, it's really the call to recognize God's Word, Scripture in our lives, to really focus in on our hearts about that. And so Archbishop Vigneron has written a pastoral letter that just came out this past weekend on the power of the Word of God, a pastoral note from Archbishop Vigneron on sacred scripture. I'm going to be using some of it with the parish staff at our February meeting because there's some concrete suggestions um, that we need to look at as parish staff in regards to how we're helping you in some ways come to know God's word more. I know someone after the four o'clock mass came up to me and said, well, Father, we should be selling Bibles or we should make some Bibles available. We should encourage, you know, which Catholic Bible edition would you suggest? I did get some emails about people who um, somehow were sparked enough to do something. Uh, one of the best situations you can go to is Bishop Barron's Word on Fire, an excellent um, place to go. You can still go on form.org. We have a subscription as a parish to form.org. You can call the office if you don't know how to get onto it, well, however you want to. There's some great scripture um, videos on form.org. And also, um, Father Michael Schmidt has um, a wonderful um, year in getting to know the Bible. So there's a lot of things. You, if you don't know where, contact the office. Or I think the best way is to actually email. You know, email Becky, email myself, email Jason. Um, you certainly can email me because there's a lot of different things out there in helping to know God's Word. And if you really have nothing else and you're really not sure what to do, just open the Bible. Open it. Um, Pope Francis, at his uh, homily, he wasn't able to say the Mass. He had a sciatic nerve and it's still bothering him a lot. But uh, the Archbishop that read his homily, um, in the homily, Pope Francis is suggesting two things for all of us. One, that we somehow carry around a little book of the Gospels, whether it's on our iPhone or it's an actual little copy of a book, that we somehow carry something with us all the time. And when we have a moment, open and read or do something. And then he also suggested that we um, somehow read Scripture three to five times a day. Just open up something and read a Scripture verse. So those are some possibilities for you to look at as we continue. And of course, you can read Archbishop Vigneron's entire pastoral letter, The Power of the Word of God, um, on the AOD website, and I think it's on our website also here in the parish. Upcoming dates at this time. Uh, don't forget this coming Sunday at 11 a.m. is the Children's Mass, January 31st. We're really trying to tweak it and make sure it's children friendly. Uh, we're still working on that, but we really want it to be a moment where the children can connect. So please don't forget that the last Sunday of every month at 11 a.m. is the Children's Mass, right? Good. Um, this uh, coming month in February, I just want to put yourself aware of a couple things. On February 2nd, which is the Tuesday Mass, we'll have the Blessing of Candles before the 9 a.m. Mass, which is also the World Day of Consecrated Life. So um, if you have any candles that need to be blessed, we will bless them on the Tuesday Mass at 9 a.m. before the Mass. And also we're celebrating World Day of Consecrated Life. On February 4th, um, we will have the Mass of St. Blaise. It's really for Wednesday, February 3rd, but it's my day off. So on Thursday, February 4th, we will celebrate the Feast of St. Blaise in the church, and we will do the Blessing of Throats at the Mass. Um, also February 5th, we have our regular First Friday Holy Hour. Um, this month it will be focused on asking the intercession of Saint Joseph before the Blessed Sacrament. And don't forget that this coming month of February, we certainly have Ash Wednesday popping up on February 17th, beginning of Lent. Masses are at 9 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. with distribution of ashes. And of course, as you know, every month we have our parish staff meeting. Again, if there's something you want to share with a staff member, um, they could also bring it up to the, our staff meeting. And that's always the second Thursday of the month at 10 a.m. So I think that's about it. Um, I'm hoping and praying that everyone is doing well at this time. I pray that 
each of us will have the courage and strength and the commitment to open our hearts and our entire selves to the ongoing conversion that each of us is called to as we look to the feast of the conversion of St. Paul, every one of us still is in an ongoing conversion. No one has fully arrived. So I hope and pray that you will find that deep conviction that Christ loves each of us with the inexhaustible charity of God's own heart. And of course, you know, I have to close with a little humorous moment, and I close with reference to the conversion of St. Paul. And it's interesting because here is a picture. And there's St. Paul walking away from the people, going down towards, you know, Damascus on the road. And if you look closely at what's in front of him, there's a banana peel. And what are the words of the cartoon? It says, Paul's other, less celebrated Damascus Road experience. So, of course, in Scripture, that Damascus Road experience was the conversion of Saul to Paul. But there's a little cartoon, a little banana peel, the less celebrated Damascus Road experience. I would suggest to you, as I suggested to the parish staff today when I shared that cartoon, just be careful where you walk this week, that you don't slip on any banana peels. I can testify with my broken ankle. It wasn't a banana peel. But um, be careful and have a beautiful week. God bless. Take care.